So, if you think your brand new diesel is clean, modern, and engineered with the sophistication of a Swiss watch, you will be right. But if you spend more than three minutes on any diesel lover websites, you'll probably read this. Just rip that thing right out, mates. You'll get better fuel economy, more power, job's done. But if you do that, then your clean diesel is no longer a watch. It becomes a chimney, a suit belching lung wrecking nitrogen oxide production plant on wheels. And get this, it pollutes more than your granddad's tractor. I wish I was joking. I am talking about the diesel particulate filter, or DPF for short. Yanking out the most important bit of your car's emission system might be an easy fix to a clogged DPF. Well, cutting it out and remapping the ECU for around 400 euros sounds a lot better than paying several thousand for a new DPF. But is it really? Back in the old days, diesel engines were like tractors. They were slow, noisy, smelly, and they produced more black smoke than a burning tire factory. Fast forward today, modern diesels are miracles of engineering. Turbocharged, computer controlled, running at pressures so high, it'll make a jet engine flinch. And the DPF is all part of that system. It doesn't sit there alone. It's monitored by sensors, back pressure sensor, differential pressure, temperature probes, and all of that is feeding data to the ECU. Remove the DPF and you will break that loop. Now the ECU is either misinformed or you have to tune it out entirely. Bad remaps can cause overfueling, turbo wear, injector fouling, EGR issues, and even cracked pistons due to improper exhaust temperatures. Now here's something that might surprise you. If you remove the DPF from a modern diesel, it can actually emit more particulate matter, even more than those old diesels that used to fog up entire roundabouts. Why? Well, it's down to how modern diesels work. They use ultra-high pressure common rail fuel injection, multiple injection events per cycle, and incredibly precise fuel air mixing. All that creates extremely fine soot. Particles so small, they're practically invisible. All diesels, they burn less fuel efficiently and produce big soup clumps. The black smoke you can see. It's messy, but it's less sneaky. So what does a DPF actually do? Well, it's essentially a ceramic honeycomb that traps microscopic particles that are created during combustion. Now, it being a filter, it clogs, right? Yes. But the DPF has a self-cleaning trick called regeneration. And there are three regeneration cycles. Passive, active, and forced. Passive happens automatically at cruising speeds when the exhaust gets hot enough. Active is where the ECU is injecting extra fuel to raise the exhaust temperatures. Forced regeneration is where the car has to be serviced because the first two cycles were ignored. So yes, the DPF clogs, but only when it's ignored, driven cold or malfunctioning. It's not a design flaw, it's a use case issue. So why do people remove the DPF? Well, some might say you can gain extra power, better fuel economy, there's no more clogging obviously, and you would avoid costly repairs. And from a superficial point of view, all of that makes sense. Removing the DPF does reduce back pressure, and some people see power increases up to 10%. But there's a huge catch. DPF removal is illegal in many countries, like the UK, US, Canada, and the whole European Union. An MLT failure is basically guaranteed without one. And also fines for individuals can be in the thousands. And these are just the legal risks. Now, modern DPFs reduce particulate emissions by over 95%. Remove the DPF and suddenly all those bad particles are getting into the air we breathe. These particles cause cancer, heart disease, just to name a few, and they are especially dangerous to the elderly and the children. Cities across Europe have seen measurable air quality improvements directly linked to DPF enforcement. Now to give you some numbers and real world data. I had my Ford here tested and actually I was quite pleased with the results because it passed with flying colors. The absolute limit on a particulate test here in Eastern Europe is 1 million particles per square centimeter. In Germany, I believe it's 250,000 particles per square centimeter. Quite a difference, but that's not the point. My Ford here with the two liter diesel had 700 particles per square centimeter. Not 700,000, but just 700. And then I asked the guy who tested my car, what's the highest he has seen? And he said over 9 million. And I believe it was on a two liter Volkswagen diesel. Imagine 9 million. Pardon my math. 
but isn't that more than 12,000 times more than my Ford has? It will take more than 12,000 of these Fords to emit as much particulate matter as that one Volkswagen, which probably had the DPF cut out. So what can you do to prevent the DPF getting clogged? Well, drive longer distances at least once a week, avoid short city trips, use high quality fuel and oil, and if you get the DPF warning light, don't ignore it. Take the car for a longer spin on a freeway till the light disappears. If the light stays on even after 800 or so kilometers, get it serviced and let them do a forced regeneration. And if that still doesn't help, consider taking the car to a place where the DPF can be cleaned. If the light comes back on even after cleaning it, then odds are that something else might be wrong, like an incorrect fuel air mixture. Your diesel can last hundreds of thousands of kilometers with the DPF intact, if it's maintained and driven correctly. The horror stories, they are usually from misuse and not from design. So, in short, what happens if you delete the DPF? Well, suddenly your shiny new diesel pollutes more than a 1985 Peugeot 504. Yes, the one that used to shake itself to bits and leave a cloud behind that looked like a runaway semi-truck. Now, look, I love diesels. I love torque. I love pulling a trailer full of firewood up a hill in six gear without breaking a sweat. Okay, I might have over-exaggerated that, but you get the point. But if you remove the DPF, you're not tuning it, you're actually ruining it. And for what? A bit of noise? A bit more power? Get a car that's more powerful. Now, modern diesels are brilliant. So do us all a favor and keep the filter, because believe it or not, fresh air still has fans. Thank you for watching. See you next time.